Hello everyone, today we have new video review and as you can see this time we are going to check small scale aircraft uh, to be precise it's a 144 scale aircraft kit which comes from Armory Models Group so as you can see it's a Su-24M Fencer D Soviet supersonic attack aircraft and it copies marking options in ex-USSR country service so, in 144 scale this should be quite a reasonable size model, and that's why we are checking this commercial sample, so it means you'll get exactly the same kit, exactly the same contents, if you order it in any good model shop. I think you can order it directly from manufacturer website. So, first of all, we have this nice box art. Here we have some information about this kit. So, wingspan will be 73 or 121 millimeters. I guess there is no need to explain why we have two numbers because of this. It's variable wing angle. Also, length will be 171 millimeter. It's quite impressive in my opinion. Height will be 46 millimeters, which is more or less standard for 144 scale. Then here on the side we can see uh, three marking options which are included into this kit. Let's zoom out so that you can see whole kit. So we have, I guess, that's a um, Belarusian, Ukrainian and also Russian marking options. But we will have to check the assembly manual. Then on the rear side, instead of marking guide, we have pictures of other kits available from this manufacturer. I'm not sure why it was decided to do like this. Well we have what we have. Then here we have some information about the kit. It's written in Ukrainian and English. So kit contains plastic and P parts for one model. Glue is not included, blah blah blah. Okay, let's open it. It's a side opening box and here is what we have inside. So it's a, um, I guess, plastic parts and also the assembly manual. Here you can see them on the cutting mat hours. So we will check this stuff paper printed a bit later. First of all I would like to take a look at plastic parts. So they're packed into this ziplock bag. That's cool because you will be able to reuse um, this plastic bag a bit later. Okay we place it somewhere here. Okay so let's start with plastic parts first uh, because here the first sprue is already quite interesting. I will place it here and let's zoom in so that you can see all those parts with your eyes. So we have here armament obviously, bombs and as you can see bombs are modeled as one piece parts. Why? Because this is a 144 scale so this is why uh, we don't need to mold them as a two piece assembly or something else. Just give me a second I think there was somewhere the flash white. Maybe I will use my font's flashlight just to show you more on this. Yes, now you should be able to see it. So here you can see that we have really nicely molded one piece parts. And I think it won't be difficult to separate them. But be sure not to lose them because otherwise it will be quite an interesting process to find them. Okay, let's zoom out. And maybe I will choose the a bit slower shutter. So that was the first plastic sprue. I guess there was no need to do the zoom mode, but there will be need to do the zoom mode with this one. So let's zoom in. Uh, here we have again some various external accessories. So first of all, I will show you whole view. So as you can see, we have fuel tanks. We have special pylons, which will be actually carrying these fuel tanks. But let's zoom in even more and do the zoom mode. So, as you can see with those two halves, you have only the guiding tab here. So, you have to be careful while combining those two parts together. But otherwise, I don't see any issues. So, just be sure to take your time with those few tank halves. 
Next, um, Plastic Sprue is a more interesting thing. Why? Because here we have FusiWatch panels. Obviously, FusiWatch is not divided into house, it is divided into separate panels because of this boxy silhouette. And you can see that we have here recess panel lines, we have also nose section which is glued out of two parts. The same can be said about this front area. But let's zoom in and do the zoom mode with this part so that you can see all this with your own eyes. So of course with nose cone you have to be careful, just let me take a closer look because we have the guiding tabs again and we have only one here and you have to combine it carefully in order to avoid any possible seams and gaps in such visible area. Next we have the last grey plastic sprue as far as I can see, so here manufacturer placed uh, wing parts and also the tail section parts as well and also we have I can see some parts for the landing gear system for the cockpit but you will see it in a um, zoom section. Nevertheless so uh, we have those two separate uh, or different parts for various wing configurations so wings won't be movable you will have to decide straight away and then it will be fixed for um, for your project and now let's zoom in and check those parts closer. Due to scale, uh, those wings are molded as one piece parts. Of course, that's an advantage because you won't have to waste your time with separate halves. From the other side, um, it could be movable part instead of the fixed part. But we have what we have, so you have to choose the version for your model right from the beginning. Okay, now I'm opening another plastic bag. Here we have various minor bonuses for this kit. So for example here you can see this tiny decal sheet. Let's zoom in. Now we should be able to see it. Here we have decals for the cockpit. So all those cockpit items will be replicated with decals. Well in 140, 144 scale it should be more than enough. Then we have another plastic bag. Here we have resin parts. And there are not many of those but as you can see we have the engine nozzle which is molded as one piece part. Then we have this part, I'm not sure where it will be used, I guess it was used for the engine nozzle maybe, or maybe not. We'll have to check the assembly manual. And here you can see thin parts which will be used for um, external detailing, I guess they will be on, or maybe these are control sticks for the cockpit. So here you can see them in a close up. Let's for refocus the camera, now we should be able to see it. Those are really tiny control sticks. 
Next we have also clear ports. Here they are. Again, we refocus the camera, now we should be able to see it. So here are manufacturer placed various canopy parts. Of course, masks are not included and as you can see, molding quality is okay. I would rather polish these parts and cover them with glass lacquer in order to get them even more, uh, I would say, glass-like. But it will be up to you, you can also use these parts out of the box. And next we have also decal sheet. So here you can see it. Let's not forget that this is 144 scale kit, so that's why one decal sheet is more than enough to fit all marking options, as you can see here. Of course, there is no uh, no stencils included, but we have here the Pepsi logo. I'm just curious why it is included there. We will have to check it. And the last bonus, which will be helpful for this project is this one. It's a small P thread with various items for fine detailing. Now we can move on to the paper print. So first of all, we have the marking guide. So even though there is nothing printed on the rear side of the box, we have the marking guide printed in form of separate brochure. So here you can see first three marking options. This one comes from Ukrainian Air Force. And here you can see also the paints chart. Next, we have the also three aircraft from Ukrainian Air Force. Those three also come from Ukrainian Air Force, but this one is already Belarus Air Force. Then we have the Soviet Air Force here. One more from Russian Air Force. Another Russian Air Force aircraft. This one comes from Soviet Air Force Kopet Nari Air Base, and as you can see, um, this one is from Voronish and it had the Pepsi logo on the nose. I'm not sure what's the story behind it, so if you know, write it in the comments. Here you can see also another one from Kubinka Airbase, and here we can see the top and bottom view for USSR and Ukrainian Air Forces. Okay. And next we have assembly menu. Assembly menu is surprisingly big for such kit. And on the first page, we don't have any history notes. We have parts map straight away. Then assembly process starts with cockpit. Here you can see the sequence, what you have to do. Then cockpit is covered with those two halves from bottom and from the um, top. Here we continue with nose assembly. And note that nose assembly will involve a lot of various parts. So don't forget to install them because antenna, as you can see, I think it can be left off until the end of the assembly, but you have to check it uh, before the installation. Here we continue with uh, the tail fin and also the parachute container, um, wing installation here, tail wings, engine nozzles, and then we continue with installing the air intakes and the nose section into the place. Landing gear system goes afterwards. Here we install the Sakhalin refueling pod drop tanks, cruise missiles, bombs, bomb racks, and also another missile on launch rail. Here you can see the configuration for the bombs. This one goes with cruise missiles. This one goes with refueling pod and also fuel drop tanks under the fuselage. So it will be up to you which one you choose. And here you can see the picture with full bomb load on this aircraft. It looks impressive in my opinion. I think in small scale it still would be a quite nice build because you will be able to replicate the most of the features of this aircraft. Price is also quite reasonable so if you would like to have a small copy of this aircraft just check this kit and maybe order it for your next project. Of course, I will be happy to hear your opinion about this kit here in the comment section below. If you like this video, don't forget to press the like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel because it will help you uh, to check all fresh video reviews. And I will see you tomorrow in our traditional daily review as usual. Bye.